the driver for these reporters is really the recognition that uh, the world needs a revolution in energy technologies. We cannot continue in the same path we're in right now. Our energy system is relying on fossil fuels, is relying on fuels from, uh, from unstable parts of the world, and, and the, what us and a lot of other groups have been recognizing over the past you know, 10, 20 years is that we need a new range of energy technologies that can provide the energy we need to grow uh, in industrialized countries, but also in developing countries and that we need to do this in a, in a different way. So we started uh, to work on this project about three years ago. Uh, the, the name of the report that we are uh, releasing is the, uh, it's called uh, Transforming U.S. Energy Innovation. And our idea was to take uh, a systems approach to the uh, innovation system in the United States. Our report looks at several different things. It says, first of all, you need to do more federal government investment in the initial research development demonstration of these new technologies. And to come up with those conclusions, we interviewed over a hundred uh, experts in different areas of energy technology. We asked them how much should be spent in their area of technology. If that was done, how much progress that would lead to in cost and performance. And then we plugged that into economic models to look at, okay, how much could you get out of that in reducing your carbon emissions and reducing your dependence on imported oil uh, in reducing the cost of the energy system. Okay, so that's one thing is how much should the federal government spend. Then we looked at, well, if the federal government's going to spend more, it ought to get the most bang for its buck. So we looked at the performance of the labs and the other energy innovation institutions and we said, how can we make those more efficient and effective? Then we said, okay, actually the private sector is the key player on this, even more important in some ways than the federal government. But the federal government has a role in getting the technologies to the point where the private sector can take them up and in giving the private sector the incentives in the market to deploy uh, those technologies. So we looked at what is the private sector doing today and did a, an unprecedented survey of private sector energy innovation and what does it take for the government to motivate more work by the private sector? In our research we found that there were some technology areas that would benefit the most from large percentage increases in funding from the government for energy R&D. And the areas that uh, we found would benefit the most from these large increases are solar photovoltaics, uh, batteries uh, for utility scale energy storage, um, bioenergy and also buildings efficiency. We also found that uh, other three technology areas um, would also benefit from increases in funding. However, these increases in funding are, uh, are smaller in, in percentage term. And these areas that will also benefit from funding increases are nuclear power, vehicles, and uh, coal and natural gas with carbon capture and storage. I think it's crucial, even in a time of budget constraint, to make high payoff long-term investments that are important for the future of the country. And if you look at the past, the investments that have been made in efficiency and renewables have paid off hugely. That's been reviewed by the National Academy of Sciences and others. It's clear that those investments have resulted in huge economic payoffs for the United States. In fact, we found that a few billion dollars more a year today in energy R&D could lead to hundreds of billions of dollars a year in savings to the economy in a strict carbon scenario uh, by 2050, for example. Um, so we think these investments are important to the future of the country, and there's lots of different ways you could imagine funding them. In the past, for example, uh, a small fee was put on uh, transfers of natural gas through pipelines to fund research in recovering nat natural gas, and that research actually paid off in huge improvements in the ability to recover natural gas from, for example, coal bed methane. So that's the kind of thing you can easily imagine doing this outside the normal appropriations process so that it doesn't add to the deficits of the U.S. government. What we found in our study of the National Renewable Energy Laboratory is that while it has some cap capabilities that are very valuable, such as providing uh, testing facilities so that private firms can come in and use uh, facilities, um, they, they have also uh, proven to be very uh, important in, in some new technology companies such as First Solar. They were developed in close partnership initially with National Renewable Energy Laboratory. 
we found that there were many things that were hampering its ability to be more effective. So for example, we found that uh, the, the labs are facing very volatile budgets and innovation it's uh, an activity that takes uh, long periods of time and having uncertainty about uh, funding from different areas going forward really uh, doesn't help. Uh, we also found that, uh, that there wasn't enough information about the markets being used at high levels in the decision making. So the researchers at the national labs that are interacting with private firms that have a lot of technical and market knowledge um, are not contributing as much as they could in, in decisions at higher levels at the department about where to spend funds. And we also found that there weren't enough incentives to, for entrepreneurship. It's crucial to structure the market so that countries, companies have an incentive to deploy these low carbon, innovative, clean energy technologies. Uh, if, you, if it remains free to just dump your pollution into the atmosphere, people are going to keep doing that. And so what we found is you need a burst of investment in the R&D to develop the new energy technologies, but you also need the government policies to then give the private sector who ultimately deploy these things the incentive to deploy those technologies that you've developed. And you need to integrate your policies to develop new technologies with your deployment policies rather than having one focused in one area and the other focused in another area as we've too often done in the past. The U.S. risks losing uh, a lot of, uh, of new markets in the future if it is not active in at least some of these areas. We have seen uh, uh, China and other countries taking the lead, uh, manufacturing wind uh, turbines, solar panels, uh, and, and, and other technologies. And, and while I don't think we want to say the U.S. should be the leader in all our, in our technologies, uh, we, uh, we found that, uh, that, that energy markets are something that are going to be continuing to be important and to grow, and it wouldn't be a smart policy by the U.S. government if it just decided we're not going to try to compete in any of these markets. Well, the world really needs, and the United States needs, a real transformation of the energy technology we have available. We're going to need dramatically more energy to fuel a gro growing world and we need to produce that energy without dumping so much carbon into the atmosphere. In fact, we need a drastic reduction in the amount of carbon going into the atmosphere as we're ramping up the amount of energy we pr produce. And that's just a huge challenge. We're talking about tens of trillions of dollars of energy infrastructure that's in place around the world that's going to have to be changed, replaced, and so on. So we need a huge increase in the pace at which we develop new technologies. So that's really uh, the focus of this report is how do we change the policies of the U.S. government in particular to get that revolution in energy technology that we need.